This video was brought to you by Stoenberg, a bedroom planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Beal. Yo, what's up? This is Bimmer Bjorn speaking from the BMW iX X Drive 40. So this is the smaller battery with 76.6 kilowatt hour. Earlier I tested the one with the big battery, 111 kilowatt hour. So it's cheaper. It's 150. No, it's 180 kilograms lighter. And to me, this seems like the better option because. The, the extra 50 is 2.7 tons and this is roughly 2.5 tons and I can kind of feel that it's more nimble. Well, hmm, why is it that every time I want to do something, okay, whatever, let's uh, I get stuck behind freaking slow poke. This is an uh, electric uh, bus. Let's get over here. So I can show some of the features, by the way. Uh, when you get to a parking lot, you have the 360 camera. And I'm not sure if I can show you in the camera. I guess we can see. Let's see here. 
we get over here, we press the parking uh, thing. Uh, yeah, and then I get the 360 bird's view. So let's see now. Uh, if I try to find a parking, or oh, well, except for the lines here, it tends to be washed out. Yeah, they're, they're kind of bad. That's a bummer. Okay, maybe what about over here? Is that better? Ish? Yeah, I think I kind of see it. Let me just try here. Wow, the, okay, there, there, there. I kind of see it here in the screen. So you see? Yeah, yeah, and then it zooms in. Oh, no, noise, noise. Hey, can I, can I? Okay, it's not that intuitive. Start reversing assistant. Yeah, but you see, there's no reason for BMW drivers to park bad. And there is actually something called a blinkers a turn signal here. Start reversing assistant. Select reverse gear and tanks. Okay. Well, you know, I, I actually never tried. Huh? What? What, what, what? What is the car doing now? Seems like it's going the same way I came from. It recorded my movements. Yeah. Uh, okay, this is this is new. This is definitely new. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, oh, oh, it's gonna stop. It's gonna stop here, right? Wow. And the route will be reached shortly. When about? Ah! Then it just keeps driving. <laughs> Okay, that, that was uh, welcome to the BMW uh, new feature. Yeah, how to crash your car. Okay, well, anyway, all right, let's uh, get back to the road then. So that was uh, cool. It has some cool tech. Uh, and also, what I like about the BMW is that, I have to switch off this one, is that, um, uh, why do I get behind these slow pokes all the time today? You, you can save the, the profile in the, in the cloud. And then once I got back in here, I just loaded, uh, logged in to myself, and then it applied all the settings. And it was in Norwegian first, it switched over to English, set the temperature for me, adjusted the seat, uh, steering wheel, everything. It was brilliant. That's something, that's the feature that Tesla has been talking about for a long time. But Elon Musk is too busy uh, buying Twitter and uh, trying to get to Mars, rather than implementing something like that, like the BMW has been having for years now. But okay, so tech-wise, I'd say PMV is is pretty like there. You know, they have some cool tech. Um, I have Spotify also here in the car. Not every car I test nowadays has Spotify integrated. Uh, and then as for the ride, you know, this BMW is so quiet. It's so comfy, comfy. I measured actually the noise even with 21-inch wheels. I measure it to be more uh, quieter than uh, e-tron with acoustic glass but then that measurement was done uh, i think it was a couple of years ago where the the, the asphalt was getting rougher and rougher but they, there's indication that maybe the, the ix is is better noise wise than uh, e-tron even so it, it's just really really quiet uh, but uh, it's an suv after all this big car almost as big as a model x so uh, when it comes to handling uh well, maybe, maybe i change my mind let's go around here a little bit um you see now even in the comfort mode or in the whatever mode you should call it uh, the default mode it still goes like i wouldn't say like a rocket but it, it's fun to drive you see uh and then you can switch here we have button we have some buttons here uh switch over to uh no actually let's use the iconic sounds um, it wasn't that one I was looking for. My my modes, okay, sport mode. All right, we have turn on Hans Zimmer. Uh, this one though, why the heck does it stay on for a very long time? Well, if you wanna go, you wanna go. <laughs> okay, okay, let's go back here, you see? So now in sport mode, I feel like everything has been sharpened up. You can customize the sport mode, but, um, it doesn't seem any faster though. It seems like all the power is already unleashed. Unlike the extra 50 where you have to go into that boost mode and everything. But um, it then rides a little bit better. It becomes less boat, which is great. Uh, and I, I feel like because this is the, the smaller battery, uh, weighs 180 kilograms less than the big brother, the extra 50 then, uh, despite being an SUV, it feels more nimble 
I don't know if I can even say that for a 2,540 kilogram heavy car with driver, but it, it does feel more nimble. It feels more fun to drive. Yeah, and in, well, okay, I normally don't do this. Uh, the switch here, uh, we switch off the hand steamer. Okay, sorry. Um, uh, and then uh, maybe you can just uh, kick back to comfort. Do it like this, and then use personal, and then push. And then when we uh, are cruising on the motorway, you can just use um, cruise control and uh, set the, um, the I, mean, I, I don't know, what I, every car manufacturer, they have their own name, but uh, I just call it auto steer, which is a general term for it. And it seems to work great. You see, we're just going, changing lane. It doesn't do the lane change for, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, it's not green yet. What the heck? I was about to... I was about to brag about how great the system is. Okay, there, there. Now it's green. Now it's <laughs> engaged. Okay, but for the most part, it will uh, do the, the auto stair very well. And unlike some other systems, like for example in the Polestar and the Volvo, they tend to hug the inner side too much. This one, uh, it seems to stay mostly centered, but however, when it comes to the auto stair again, uh, I noticed when I did 1000 km challenge and, um, and the road was a bit wet, then the auto stair had problems detecting the lane. Uh, the, yeah, even though the lane markings in Sweden were quite good, but because of some wet parts and some dry parts, then the car became confused and then the auto stair was on and off. So that's a little bit minus. Uh, and also from time to time, time it will do a slight uh, phantom braking. Uh, typically, typically this is a perfect scenario. Maybe I have to drive faster, but uh, I have too many uh, uh, backseat drivers uh, watching the video right now, so I can't drive faster. Uh, typically this would be a perfect scenario where I approach a truck and then a slight uh, bend like this and it will it will then uh, phantom brake but not as hard as Tesla but this happens with many many cars so um, but yeah um, I don't know if you can hear but it, it's just very quiet in here okay now I can't uh, show you guys the potential because we are kind of too far away from the 100 zone and 110 zone but I can tell you that when I'm cruising on the 110 zone I'm cruising on 120 ish uh, kilometers per hour this car is just dead silent. It's just remarkable how, how quiet it is in here. And we even have, uh, we don't have double glazed window here. And we also have uh, a frameless windows. <laughs> I mean, sorry, fr fr frameless doors. So I don't know where they managed to uh, block out all the sound. There must be lots of soundproofing in the doors and the floor and, and the roof and everywhere. I mean, the Germans, they know how to build silent electro autos or autos in general. They have autobahn, so they, they have to uh, make sure that the cars they uh, sell can, can become quiet at 180, 200 kilometers per hour. So, yeah, but you can go now. Go, 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 go. You can go. What the heck? Like, like I said, what's up with weird drivers today? It's Weissnitz, man. It's <laughs> okay. Oh, just had a little acceleration ASMR. Okay. So, um, yeah, what else is it say? Um, when it comes to the ride, um, you can adjust some of the dampers and if you want to. Uh, I just leave it on the personal, uh, whatever setting it is now. It's nice and comfy but it does feel a bit boat so for example um, uh, model X will feel sportier than this uh, well I, I'm not sure what other cars I should be comparing against um, model Y does that make any sense no 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 model Y is not worthy to be compared with the IX because model Y is cheaper model Y is not a, a, a German uh, premium electro auto okay maybe model Y performance becomes Giga Berlin yeah okay eventually when I test out that one uh, we'll see but um, I tried to compare this IX against um, uh, e-tron fat e-tron because price wise they are similar they are both from Germany uh, they are both quiet, they are both thirsty-ish. Well, <laughs> okay, let's talk about uh, consumption then. But th that's where the similar similarities between the, the IX and the um, uh, e-tron differs because the e-tron has always been thirsty. The 
Audi promised, okay, there was some uh, software update or something that will improve the, the, the consumption, but did it do it? Not really. But somehow the iX, okay, when, when I tested the, the big battery, it was somewhat thirsty at the 1000 km challenge uh, at night uh, in Sweden and all that, when going 120, 130 km per hour. Uh, but um, now that it's summer and now that we are driving on like not so fast speeds, then the car becomes remarkably efficient to the point where it is actually slightly more efficient than a Model X, X. And Model X Raven is even a bigger car, of course, but Tesla, you know, Tesla has been known for a long time to be very efficient, but somehow this fat beaver managed to beat Model X. Uh, okay, maybe not like side to side, but at least the test I did, it was showing lower consumption numbers than Model X. So that is really impressive, which means that this, uh, this iX, which has only 76.6 kilowatt hour, can actually match Fat e-tron with uh, 95 kilowatt hour battery when it comes to range. Now it doesn't charge as fast as Fat e-tron, but you know, charging uh, in pure kilowatt is just uh, a PR number. <laughs> That's what we learned now over the years. What matters is the efficiency. It's like a how fast can you travel really is a product of efficiency and uh, the charging speed, kind of like that. Uh, so uh, one solid proof is the 1000 km challenge where I did this in 10 hours and 20 minutes, which is exactly the same time I did it with the Fat Etron 55. Think about this bigger battery in the Fat e-tron charges faster. Fat e-tron charges like a boss. Okay, it's old tech, it's getting old, but, uh, and then yeah, I know e-tron people, they will defend this there, yeah, but it's an old car, you know, stop picking on the e-tron. No, I'm just using it as a reference, just so you guys can understand that, yes, even if you're charging really fast, uh, because the car is inefficient, then it, it is what it is. And then this car here, which is like the, the underdog in terms of charging speed, uh, well, that guy is um, can actually match the fat e-tron in 1000 km challenge huh uh, now the charging speed uh, when the charging curve I've seen is not super impressive but given that this battery is only 76.6 kilowatt hour then maybe it's not that bad maybe if you had something like 90 uh, kilowatt hour then you would expect faster speed. So I feel like, okay, the charging curve here doesn't typically resemble the, the, the German uh, flat charging uh, rate, something like that, you know? But it's, it's okay, it's still okay. I mean, it still charges fast at the bottom. Uh, it still receives roughly 150 kilowatt on the bottom. So that's uh, what matters. Um, but okay. And what else? Yeah, maybe I should just go, uh, yeah, I should do it. I should go to the big and how we can test it over there. Uh, standard procedure. So um, uh, this is a little bit uh, double up maybe because I already made an, uh, like a driving impression of the, the X-Drive 50. So why do I have to make yet another one? Well, I feel like these cars, even though they have the same body and everything, uh, but simply because the battery is different and I actually don't know about the motors. I don't have uh, any answer to that one yet, but I feel like because this one seems more efficient and lighter and more nimble than uh, it, it's important to highlight the strength of this car because when I heard about it first, I was like, huh? It has a smaller battery. So I was thinking, nah, it can't keep, or it can't uh, compete with the uh, Fat Etron 55, right? Well, actually, apparently it can. Uh, so I'm a, I'm a managed to measure 415 kilometers of range on this car, right? Uh, so uh, when you have that kind of range numbers, then I think it's sufficient because if you ask any e-tron owner out there, uh, they will, they're happy. I mean, even e-tron 50 owners are happy-ish. Well, okay, maybe they feel like the range might be a little bit short, but the e-tron 50 is, you know, short range. But it charges fast though, the e-tron 50. But still, the e-tron 50 for some reason was uh, a lot slower than this car in 1000 km challenge. So this one is a direct competitor price-wise, size-wise to the e-tron 55. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, so it means that uh, even with a smaller battery, iX, you can still use it for long trips or for daily driving, especially, but also for long trips. Uh, it's still fine. Uh, okay, okay, nicely done. Um, it doesn't have to be 90 kilowatt hour, you know, like I-Pace or... Uh, 
fat e-tron. It seems a bit firm, yeah, but I mean, I mean it's firm-ish, but it, it, uh, way, it goes over the bumps, they're fairly nice. Okay, let me do a little flip mode here. All right. Uh, backup cameras are great. And also forward cameras are great, so all that stuff is, uh, is good. Okay, let me see. This time around, I have to take it at an angle. Well, except for that the cars are kind of in the way there. Oh, well, uh, wait, 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 wait. Let me try again here. This angle here, okay. Okay, it has that sideways movement, but uh, I'd say it's not that bad. Oh, oh, it's purpose go with the bumps here. It's purpose go with this one also like, oh, uh, oh, uh, yeah, you see? Okay, so, yeah, I mean, it, it you see, the ha it has this boat movement, kind of. And then if I switch it over to um, sport, let me wait a couple of seconds before it's kind of sharpens up everything. Okay, let's try again. Okay, then it feels it feels tighter. Yeah, yeah, it definitely feels tighter. And you can imagine we're doing this with a 2,500 kilogram uh, heavy uh, SUV, right? So in terms of that, well, <laughs> it was this big brother that saved my life and then dodge the moose. So, uh, it's still okay. I mean, it's it's um, it's not a sports car. No, no, it's not a sports car. You have to just accept that this is still an SUV, but uh, it has a nice ride. It has a nice feel of everything. It feels, it just floats over the bumps. It, it just, um, yeah, I, I'm not sure how to describe it, but uh, you, you know the German feel of it. And when I'm driving this uh, iX, I feel like this is this is above Audi Q4. This is above uh, the ID4 and uh, and uh, it's called the Enyaq. When it comes to the comfort and the noise level, everything. This is just this is top notch, you know. Um, so that's what you that's what you're getting. So I mean, people will compare. Yeah, the size wise, uh, the iX can is actually roughly on par with. Uh, with, for example, Enyaq and um, uh, Ionic 5. But those cars, in terms of driving feel and comfort and soundproofing and everything, is nowhere near this one. The only car, cars, I guess, that can match the iX is Fat e-tron and Neo ES8. Those are the two cars. Model X is slightly in a different uh, league when it comes to that one. Model X is more sporty, faster, um, yeah, and not so comfy as, the, as these ones. Um, but okay, so uh, what else? Uh, st the sound system. I have to mention the sound system. I tried now. This one is equipped with the Harman Kardon. It sounds wonderful. It's it just perfect. Uh, to, for me, it's just perfect. And when I tested um, the Bango Ulfsen, I felt like the base was a little bit overwhelming. And I look at the spec, so the Bang Ulufsen system has over 30 speakers. I was like, ha, why do you need that many speakers? I, I, I don't know, but um, yeah, so the Bang Ulufsen is the most expensive one. But to be honest, I couldn't hear the difference. Maybe I'm not an audiophile enough, but yeah, <laughs> uh, I just couldn't hear the difference. So uh, I guess you, you might be able to, let me switch over to, uh, to comfort here. No, 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 the efficient. No, 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 no. Personal. Okay, there you go. So at least that part, yeah, you can save uh, 30,000 euros and go for the Harman Kardon. Uh, and I think you will be happy with it. Again, the laser lights, the lights here are wonderful. I can't test it over here, but you guys, I have a dedicated video. You, can, you guys can just watch uh, the headlight test. It is, again, top of the crop. It beats e-tron, but e-tron is getting cold, right? But just as a comparison. Um, so it's one of the best headlights out there, uh, really, which you, if you get the laser lights. And what else? Um, yeah, yeah. this one, by the way, can tow 2,500 kilos, which is actually the highest tow capacity of any EV, at least in the European market right now, if you don't count uh, pickups and, what, and whatever, right? Uh, so, uh, really, um, the the whole car just um, it's just very impressive. Uh, okay, the first time I borrowed it, it was winter, and then okay, I didn't see the the, the good efficiency numbers and all that. Plus, that I felt like that one was felt more like a whale because it was so heavy. Uh, and do you actually need 
well, I can always ask you, yeah, do you need 500 to 550 kilometers of range? Uh, well, not everyone needs it. Uh, this one, you can still get 400 something in summer, uh, depending on how fast you drive. And if you, drive, if you hammer it, you get uh, roughly 300 kilometers of range. And that is still good. That, I think that's good enough for many people. So um, for me, though, I almost like this I uh, this this um, X Drive 50. No, sorry, I like this X Drive 40 better than the 50. <laughs> yeah, because simply because it's lighter and it should also be a little bit more efficient. And of course, night bon bonus is cost it costs less. So to me, it's just win-win to go for this one versus the the more expensive and heavier one. Um, and uh, yeah, what else should I say? Um, okay, people uh, people don't like the looks. They say oh, it's ugly. It's ugly. Yeah, I I agree. It's not the most beautiful car, but it, it's kind of growing on me. Let me see. Try. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh. Yeah, okay. That's probably, so it has this sideways SUV wagging uh, movement, but it's it's comfy and wifey. Uh, what's also in here? Yeah, I need to point out something else here. Um, I've been taking some trips with wifey to the grocery store and downtown and we also brought the baby uh, stuff with us. So I have a Cybex um, uh, cloud set, uh, child seat, put in the back and I also loaded the Cybex e -priam in the trunk and it fits there without having to take out the, off any wheels. Uh, and also I get the impression that uh, this, the car has been designed towards being child friendly. So we have a, a plastic lid over the Isofix uh, uh, hooks, for example, and the plastic lid is also attached to the seat. So you just flip it open and then you close it. But for example, in the, in the Mercedes EQE I saw recently, it has a plastic cover, but then once you take out the cover, then where do you put the cover, right? Uh, and also the, op the door opens at the quite nice and, and uh, big angle so <laughs> things that I suddenly start realizing when I load and unload uh, baby and baby stuff into the car that this car seems to have been designed towards being a family car uh, so I give that one pretty good score uh, I guess I need to uh, get more experience with other cars how they uh, perform for example Tesla I'm going to be uh, interesting to try uh, try out how how well they perform in in uh, baby uh, stuff right um, but yeah so wifey was quite impressed of uh, of how how spacious it was in the back here we, we will I would put the child seat behind myself and then wifey will be sitting there where the camera is probably is, is a rear right seat and she liked it in the back there it was nice and quiet uh, even when we we're on the motorway on the side of the side here and doing uh, 90 kilometers per hour roughly i can have a conversation with my wife in the back there it was is quiet you know um but okay so now we have a little bit of everything uh, about the baby about uh, the function of the car uh, but yeah so um what 26 nook for per liter i think i had a point i've been talking a little bit back and forth but you know this is like a more like a, a ramble yeah it was about the looks yeah so remember that this is still an suv so people say it's ugly okay I i'm not gonna lie it's not the most beautiful bmw i've seen out there but i think the white here is one of the better colors at least personally for me i like the white it looks good just like the white ionic over there but the classic ionic oh that one is also nice yeah so so um okay name an suv that looks great then right you have to think eh? hmm. the model x is fat the model x is not the most beautiful uh, suv out there uh what about uh neo es8 uh, most uh, model y is like disproportional what the heck so most suvs are not sexy at all so can we just stop talking about how ugly this car is and just focus more about the function the features the soundproofing the sound system the openness oh yeah i should mention by the way um the ix if you compare the ix if if you consider uh the ix versus fat e-tron i don't know if you do maybe you do i think well, i'm trying to guess what people are looking for right because i think if you're looking for something german in this class in this yeah feature soundproofing whatever 
you will probably be comparing um, uh, Fat Etron versus IX. And personally, for me, I think the Fat Etron is a bit too cramped in here. Uh, there, there's some center console here with some screen. Okay, they have two screens and all that, which is great, but uh, and also very well executed. But I also think that this one is very well executed. You have touchscreen here. You know, it's it's. I think this is actually slightly bigger than the. the yeah, yeah, it is. It is bigger than the Etron screen. Etron screen is like this, and then it has like another one here. So total screen size might be the same. Uh, but then you have also some buttons here, and you have the the eye drive, and you have the freaking diamonds here. So you have some buttons here. Once you get used to it, you can quickly access, like I did. You know, um, uh, you have the my mode, the so switching mode. You have the you have this one here for uh, some uh, car settings. Um, and then you can go, uh, if you drive slower, you can go this one for the parking uh, stuff. But I think if you go faster now, yeah, then it disappears. Yeah, okay. Uh, so you have that here, no? so very nice. Uh, I, and at least for me, I like this openness here. And also I forgot to mention maybe that under here, you also have the wireless charging pad and you have lots of USB-Cs here. Um, and the cup holder there. So I get, I get the impression that the the cabin here has been very well designed. Uh, maybe the only minus from oh they oh they actually have oh they close it now oh okay. Maybe the only minus is that um, the the middle area here is a bit too open. I would like it to have at least a, a, a little edge, a couple of centimeters, just maybe one or two inch edge here, so that if you put something there, things won't slide into the the driver uh, floor area because then you know, worst case you know uh, an empty bottle or maybe a full bottle of uh, drink could slide and then block the brake uh, something like that you know the worst case scenario uh, but other than that i like the interior the open openness of the interior and the ix better than the fat e-tron um okay and then oh yeah this, this, this. Oh. Oh, is it, you, you, you can still have a lot of fun with this car. <laughs> it, it, it's BMW, you know, it's the ultimate driving machine. So even though it's big and it's heavy, they still try to keep that BMW feel because I used to have a BMW E61, uh, yeah, E61, the station wagon. And I just love how it rides. And I feel like there is still some BMW DNA here. Okay, maybe, it's a bit washed out because it's electric and all that, but it's still a BMW, yeah. Uh, so let's try to get back now. Um, what else is it? Uh, some other features. This car has a uh, possibility to uh, estimate how many percent you will arrive with when you uh, navigate the next charger. It also preheats the battery for, for the next charging session if you navigate to a fast charger. Let me try to drive like an idiot now. <laughs> yeah, you see, you can you can drive like a douchebag, and it just you can have a lot of fun. I wasn't even in sport mode, so this car can actually put a smile on your face. But okay, it's not a sports car. Don't I mean if you take it on the track, a Model Three performance will beat the heck out of this. But for day to day driving, it's still a lot of fun. So let's see now. Let's go back here. Um, what else should I say? Yeah, yeah one thing though, I also start doing braking test acceleration test no, so when it comes to acceleration test this one on paper is supposed to do 0 to 100 in 6.1 seconds i measured oh how much was it again 5.7 wasn't it 5.6 5.7 seconds so it's faster than spec and it also feels quicker you saw when i hammered it it went fast so it, it makes it fun to drive you know compared to for example the the uh, id4 uh, i felt like but that was the um, uh, that was the um, the rear wheel drive, but even the ID4 GTX felt like a little bit slow ish. That was also all wheel drive. Mm. Uh, but okay, so acceleration performance pretty good, uh, but not a racing car. Braking performance was exceptionally good. The, 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 the crazy thing is that this car, even though it weighs so much, it had shorter braking distance than the Model 3. <laughs> that is a lot lighter. Okay, we have fat tires, but I don't know if this has anything to do with, uh, with the brakes on the car or something, or the way they have set up the chassis, but I was just blown away how, how good the braking performance was. And this could be one of the reasons why 
<laughs> the big brother, the bad, fat beaver saved my life because when I saw something there and I just, you know, it just break really hard and well. So, and then when it comes to noise, I mentioned it before, uh, it's just there, top notch, it's there with EQC really. And a little bit in, uh, in front of uh, uh, fat e-tron even. Uh, what else did I do? Uh, I haven't done the OnlyFans run. I haven't done that, but I arranged it. Yeah, so so I think I've summarized everything. This video is getting way too long again, but um, um, I'd say that, I mean, people who are watching this video, you are probably considering buying it. Um, and yeah, so if you consider it, get it, because I think you're going to love it. I even love it, and I'm not usually an SUV guy, but after trying the previous one, I wasn't convinced with the previous one, but this one, the X Drive 40, for some reason, I was like, oh, this is really, this is, yeah, this is good shit. But okay, again, it's not perfect. I hate the diamonds, but you can opt out the diamonds, supposedly. Uh, and also, I'm not a big, big fan of the seats. They feel a bit too flat. I prefer more of the, the i4 seats or something like it's slightly sportier than this, or, or actually the Model X, Model S seats. They, they are just top notch. Uh, so that one is not perfect, but um, if you start looking at the score, if you try to score everything, right? Uh, let me just stop here so I can focus more on talking, less on driving, because I think we've done most of the driving uh, part of it. Uh, maybe one last thing I should mention, by the way, is that when I have it in B now, B mode, um, I have good region. Uh, you can put it in the smart, uh, the adaptive mode, but see now it just rolls. And then I don't like the field because if I have a navigate anywhere, it doesn't roll into uh, a roundabout. So people say, oh, I, you, oh, you should use the adaptive. Uh, well, what, what if I do like this? And I want to, uh, you, I want to here. Will it, will it actually uh, slow down for me? Maybe it does because I use the turn signal now. Hmm. Let's see. And then go here. Okay, well, I'm. In general, not a fan of the adaptive. Uh, I prefer using B mode, and then the region is fairly strong, uh, but it doesn't region all the way. So then I have to brake extra if I want to activate more region. Have blending brakes, uh, but this one, the iX, unlike the iX3, is that when you are on the waterway, when you're using cruise control and you disengage cruise control, it has a smooth transition, whereas the iX3 has this bam, this this too hard. Uh, if you have the high region on the iX3 and you disable cruise control, you, you almost jump a little bit. But here, everything is smooth. And, <laughs> and yeah, like when I drove with wifey, she was, uh, she was impressed with the car. Yeah, and she didn't know what the heck it was, but uh, she was like, oh, okay, that's nice, yeah. And you see, we've been driving around here. I'm not sure if this is a trip, maybe, yeah. The, the same valley, the same valley, yeah. So I average only 215 watt hour per kilometer. My gut feeling says if I did the same trip with uh, Fat Etron, I would be probably hovering around 250 watt hour per kilometer. There's been some start and stop, some you know, uh, it's not the most, it's not the smoothest ride uh, on, on a straight road. Uh, but okay, um, did I forget anything? No, I, th I don't think so. I mean, I think I tried to summarize everything now. That uh, p if you watch this video because you just watch me review cars and you are not interested in the car, then this car is not for you. You don't like it, that's fine. Uh, but uh, I'm trying to reach out with people who are considering this car versus something else and you want to have a family car or you just want to have that comfort, then I highly recommend it. And I, I think you're going to be happy with this one. Uh, of course, if you're not still not sure, then try other cars. Try Neo ESA, try uh, uh, Fat e-tron before you decide and then try this one before you decide. But uh, mind you that the space here though, that's a small minus. This is a fairly big car, but for some reason they haven't utilized the space that much. So you, the, the freaking hood here steals a lot of space and the back there also feels a bit narrow, for example, compared to Ionic 5 uh, or the, the MEB cars. So space-wise, maybe not the best, but you know, like I said, if you try to uh, summarize, uh, if you try to score the sound system, you score that it can pull a lot of uh, 2,500 kilos. The lights here are freaking awesome. Uh, it, it is actually one of the most efficient cars in this class, in this size. Uh, what else? Uh, nice features, nice tech like uh, Spotify and lots of stuff that I haven't even explored here, right? Uh, and the space inside, well, it's fairly okay. 
then I think once you start thinking about all this and look at the price of the car versus uh, other premium electro autos, then I think this one will get a very big total score. But again, you know, I'm not telling you that this is the right car for you because I don't know you. You might need something else. You might not like the looks. You might like the Audi look better. Then, but uh, I'm just saying that uh, it's a good car. If you think you want it, try it and you will probably like it. <laughs> and if not, then I guess I, I want to hear about it. But uh, yeah, I think I'm going to end it here. So um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.